thought we'd take a little time today to talk about the intermediate value theorem. This is um, going to show up in pre-calculus, but it becomes really important as a concept in calculus also, just for making some decisions here. So this is what we're going to say here. This is the definition of intermediate value theorem. It says if f is a polynomial function and f of a is not equal to f of b, for a is less than b, then f of x takes on every value between f of a and f of b in the interval <laughs> closed to a, b. Oh my gosh. So that sounds terrible and actually doesn't, just doesn't sound like it makes any sense, but it's the simplest thing in the world. If you don't mind, can we start here? So here it says A is less than B. So all we're saying is that A is a point to the left of B. So for right now, this is all we know. This is A, this is B. And we know that on a number line, A would be less than B. That works. Then we have to go back to this and see it says, well, F of A is not equal to F of B. So if this is the point A, F of A, then just to make it more obvious, I should move this point B, maybe up here, and B, F of B right? The height when x is equal to this number here. So a is to the left of b, and the height, the heights are not the same. And this is a polynomial function, and all that is suggesting to us is that our function is continuous. I want to make sure that everyone is reminded that a continuous function means that a function doesn't have any breaks in it, that there are no holes in it, there are no... So if I do this, This function is not continuous, it has all these breaks in it. That's what makes continuity. Now, if I do this, now we have a function that's continuous, right? There are no breaks. It does not have to be a function that goes on forever, right? Because we're just looking at this interval, and we're looking at the interval, right? A, B. So we're looking at the interval from X is the A value to X is the B value, and we're looking at what happens with our function here. But it says here that our function f of x is going to take on every value, every height value, from f of a to f of b. So let's let f of b, I'm sorry, let's let f of a be, I don't know, maybe 3, if you don't mind. And this is maybe 8. And let's let our function maybe just do something kind of crazy, and maybe it does this. Maybe it's going to go up like this, and it's going to roll out like that. And look, it's possible that this point right here is higher than this point B. It's possible. Because it doesn't say it's going to take on, it doesn't, it doesn't list exhaustively what's going to be on this graph, it, but it tells us what will definitely be on it. And all heights between 3 and 8 will be here, right? If I, got, if I didn't lift my pen, if I didn't lift my finger, and I'm dragging my finger across this thing, and I went from a height of 3 to a height of 8, I must have somewhere in there crossed a height of 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 and a half, 7 and 3 quarters, etc. It does not guarantee that we didn't go over or under any of those values. This thing could have come down and crashed underneath 3 and gone back up and done all kinds of stuff. But what we do know is that all numbers, all heights between 3 and 8 will be on there somewhere. Okay, so how is intermediate value theorem used? Intermediate value theorem is proved this way. I was going to do this example right here. It gets kind of drawn out and I don't want to go crazy with it, but let's just say this. Let's say that we have a function, and we do some math on our function, and by factoring, doing some algebra, we find out, hey, this thing has a 0 at, I don't know, x equals negative 1. And it also passes through, it also has a 0 at x equals, I don't know, maybe 4. Well, if we do a little bit of math, and, and we find that, I don't know, maybe f of 0. Let's say we, ha we had a function, and we said, you know what? When I, put it into the, when I put 0 into the equation, it came back that f of 0 was negative 3. So maybe this is 0, here's negative 3. And we know this point, 0, negative 3 exists. Well, then what we get from that, what certainty we get from that using intermediate value theorem is that every point between here and here is negative. How do we know that? I said to you that... I said to you that, there had, that the only two zeros of our function were here and here. Well, the only way we can go to, if we know we have a height less than zero in between here, they all have to be there because intermediate value theorem says that to get from a negative number to a positive number, we have to cross every number in between. And what number is between every negative and every positive number? Zero. So that's how intermediate value theorem is used. It's actually a great tool. So that's what I kind of wanted to get give you from this 
I'm going to go on and do another video, and I'm going to do two or three examples that I think will really clarify, but I was really concerned about this definition that your professor is talking to you about, and you're going, holy crap, what does this say? It just says this, okay? It just says this. All right, so I hope this was really helpful. I'm looking forward to your comments, and I hope that you've subscribed. Thanks.